Hello and welcome back to Wildebeard Reviews and welcome back to our Rewind Review Series here on the channel where we're talking about Grant Morrison's X-Men and today we're on to issue 149 of New X-Men Planet X Part 4 of 5. And I gotta say, I think this might be one of my favorite issues of this particular story arc um, thus far. I really liked the first one in, in the run. Um, you guys know about my problems with Magneto being Zorn and everything. However, that was a pretty good issue. Um, and But this one I also really like. There's a lot of good characters stuff in this one so starting with Magneto we see him become the very thing that he wanted to rebel against you know um, he becomes almost an, a Nazi in and of himself and then we have um, the character of Beak stepping up and being a hero kind of completing his hero's journey arc or getting to that next big step of it in this issue so there's a lot of good stuff in this one so let's go ahead and go through it here so uh, like I said we see a lot of bad from Magneto in this one and it gets pretty pretty rough all right so we see uh magneto here he's got his uh big old rally here he says humanity exterminations too good for them look at the state of these last dregs stumbling like cattle towards the abattoir are you ready to activate the crematoria beak uh so he's got this big crematory you see it right here you see the smokestacks and everything and beak being our hero of this issue says but this this all started because of, of, of as politics and freedom when did we turn into such total nazis and of course magneto rails against that particular label he says nazis do i look like a failed artist with a neurotic grudge against his father and the world i'm a force of nature boy i am magneto and yeah magneto i i think you've got a a grudge against the world in this you've got a grudge against humanity because to you they well not maybe not even just to him but they am they are symbolic or and in the same vein as the nazis that you know tortured him and his family during the uh, the holocaust so he's come full circle and allowed his hate to consume him and become that very thing that he hated and it gets almost even worse here uh, magneto continues he says a new world demands a new resolve we are laying the foundation stones for paradise there this is no time to be squeamish beak says there is nothing new about people about marching people into ovens Whoo! damn that is we're getting spicy here on on page two on this one and then an even angel for all of her character flaws says yeah i don't know if i really want my kids growing up as imperial stormtroopers magneto says these children of yours will grow strong and proud in a world without persecution and fear angel salvador one day they will build statues in my honor tell him toad he's like he throws it to his number one lackey over here uh, to back him up when he's going on like this and um, Toad says what he said he spent a lot of time thinking about this so just shut your yaps eh? and as we saw last issue I don't know if Magneto really has spent a lot of time thinking about this I think he's on this drug fueled rampage where he's slowly losing his mind and we'll see just how much he's losing his mind uh, at the end although maybe not we'll, we'll talk about that um, when we get there and so we got Esme throwing her hat in the ring here just just making things even worse she says it's a scientific fact humans are a lower form of life they practically admitted uh, admitted it themselves when they called us homo superior uh, magneto wrote a brilliant article about how they can't even feel pain like we do god just oh boy and it feels gross even reading something like that and then toad says uh you would have you should have been there for the experiments beak and beak says what at every Everyone can feel pain. Even a dog or, or a carrot can feel pain. And Magneto says, what? A carrot can feel pain? And he says, yeah, why not? Okay, maybe carrots are <laughs> carrots the wrong fruit to pick, but there's no way that I... And then Magneto slaps him across the face saying, vegetable. Which is, I kind of want to like take a picture of this and just crop out this one panel of Magneto hitting beak and screaming vegetable and just post it everywhere on all of my social medias with zero context as to what's going on i'm sure most people would think it's fake because you don't have any of the context it'd be kind of like the kind of the new meme template for the uh the batman slapping robin pretty pretty funny there um, Magneto carries on here, says, Carrots are not fruit, then this is not Xavier's school. This is Magneto's 
Empire. Um, and then Angel saying, you know, screaming, um, leave him be there. Then we just get even more rough. They you know, uh, basically say, you know, if you're not with us, you are against us. And you know what we say about absolutes? Only the Sith deal in them, and the Sith are the bad guys. Um, so uh, Angel here says, look at you. You're eight feet tall, and he's nothing but chicken bones and hair. He's not a killer. Magneto says, you, your, your children are soldiers. All of you are my soldiers. You will need to learn discipline. Put beak with the humans without with with or against me make your choice children again there's it's only a or b there's no in between here and angel says yells at him you're just like daddy just like her abused uh, her abusive father and then they basically shove uh magneto in there with um or not magneto they shove beak here in in with the rest of them they're carrying down him and they shove him in the car um that magneto's about to lift them all up and then just crush them and magneto then accidentally kills basilisk just another step towards his complete mental breakdown he says i said discipline because basilisk made a fart joke in, in this um um intense moment here and then he lashes out at him and accidentally kills him you can see the horror on his face he says i i didn't mean to i only meant to teach basilisk a lesson then he flies off saying the brotherhood will be reuniting or recruiting a new inner circle toad um and so they, they say just someone said uh, toad says get a find a pyrokinetic and dispose of the body uh, and we'll need a truck to get rid of him so like they just you know magneto inadvertently accidentally kills one of one of their friends here one of the team and they're all just you know yeah that's fine okay whatever and now they're carrying this one off to to shove into a car one of them here is telling beak you shouldn't people like you shouldn't be allowed uh to breed people like who like you're fighting mutant against mutant here come on what are you guys what are you guys doing and then they um magneto lifts all those cars up and beak manages to kick the door open and get out saying i you know trying to fly i can fly i can fly and it looks like he might be able to do it for just a second and then he falls and hits the building and then falls down um onto the ground here i i had faith in you beak i i really did and we see just him laid out flat here falling from however high that was in this just amazing phil jim and as art you know story wise and writing wise whatever you want to say about this story arc the the art has been absolutely primo from from good old phil there all right, and so then we see that he's fallen into uh, Mutant Town there, um, the kind of borough there where all the, the mutants live. And I thought this might be the Phoenix up here flying around, but I think it's just kind of a, a random mutant flying. Um, and then the you know, gang here finds Beak and just beats up on him um, even more. They're saying uh, Magneto rules. And then who shows up to save Beak but... Ava, uh, Phantom X's uh, external uh, uh, nervous system there that we thought was killed in the uh, the assault on the Weapon Plus arc, but no no such luck there. She is around and she says to um, to be hello X Man. My name is EVA. You can fall over now. Uh, and then she takes him to go see the rest of the survivors from Xavier's, and we see the the now three Stepford Cuckoos along with uh, Soraya or Dust there. We got some other characters here in a minute. So they're say, saying uh, apparently uh, Beak has a skull like concrete because he doesn't have a, a skull fracture and Beak says, too bad the rest of me is, a, is made of cheap broken glass. Uh, where is this? Your sister has said you were all dead or gone to Magneto's army at the Institute and this, this sister say, well, Esme is not a part of us anymore. We're three in one now, aren't we, Phoebe? Uh, Esme is the worst liar. Um, and so they've got uh, quite a few there. Um, and then we turn the page, or uh, Beast says, Magneto was not for beginners. I hate to say it all, but he would kill all of you in one minute flat. Is there one guy here who can fight? And hell yeah, there's a couple people there that can fight. Cyclops and Phantom X have shown up. Um... And the Cyclops is saying, uh, there's always us, Barnell, will we do? Just Scott being a badass. There, one little thing right here, though, um, apparently Beak knows who Phantom X is. I don't know when, 
Beak would have found out who Phantom X is. Um, I don't think they've ever met or been on the same page before. Not that I can immediately remember. Just kind of a, a, a nitpick. I don't want to spend too much time on that. But I, how does Beak know who, who Phantom X is unless EVA told him uh, when she was uh, bringing him to, to their hideout here? Um, Cyclops says, uh, calm down, Barnell. What's Magneto's plan this time? The streets are in chaos. Who's in charge out there? And then even that cop that we saw that was with um, Cyclops and Beast when they were investigating uh, Jumbo Carnation's um, assault there on the street uh, shows up there and he says, even I'm in on this. Uh, uh, Officer Foster from the NYPD mutant liaison. Uh, Beak says, there's no policeman who can fight this guy. You saw what he did to Fifth Avenue. There is no one in charge, not even Magneto, which... That's pretty much true. Magneto may think he's in charge, but even he's just kind of flying by the seat of his pants a little bit. Even uh, it just even that's just that's the way that it seems. So the the cuckoos here say uh, they shut down all electromagnetic broadcast media. Uh, effectively, he's blinded the planet, which makes telepaths the only reliable news source. Unfortunately, Magneto keeps his thoughts shielded. We'll come back to that maybe um, I'm here in a minute. So Beak tells them his plan, he says, uh, and he's er, talking about Xavier, he says, uh, and he's also keeping Professor X uh, naked in a bottle with his mind paralyzed, and he made five telephone calls, yeah, and he sent um, all the superheroes on a wild goose chase to the black to find a black hole bomb in Brooklyn just before he trapped everyone else in, in inside his magnetic shield. He's worked it out all to win this time. Now, that, that line right there there solves a problem that I thought about in last issue, but I didn't mention it. It's like, he's in, like, New York, right? Isn't that, like, the home of the Avengers? I know this is an X-Men title, but, I mean, wouldn't Magneto taking over New York City, you know, cause a response from some of the other superhero organizations that are, like, right down the street? So, um, this is just another example, I think, of uh, Morrison thinking of something. It's like, oh, yeah, I should have said something about that. I'm just going to drop it into some some exposition here of, like, hey, yeah, maybe the Avengers would have shown up. Hell, maybe the, even the Defenders or S.H.I.E.L.D. or something. He's like, yeah, he, you know shut off the world with electromagnetism and trapped the other heroes in a bubble so so they aren't coming in and it's up to us so just a little bit like oh yeah don't worry about that Let, let's move on here um and so i love scott right here he says um uh he says uh or uh, Beef says there are no X-Men, and Scott says that's not how it looks to me. I hope you all paid attention in class because there was going to be one hell of a test. Hell yeah, Scott Summers being a badass. All right, and so Phantom X here says, uh, so you're telling us, you're intending us to lead a children's crusade against the world's most dangerous super terrorist? Uh, you heard the telepaths, uh, Summers. A war has begun, the final war between man and mutant. And Scott fires back and says, what's your alternative, Phantom X? We roll over and die? Uh, there won't be a war. Uh, I won't let them, won't let him start a war, and I won't, and I don't believe for one second that Gene and the others are dead. And Phantom X is like, it's already starting humans were waiting for any excuse and magneto has just hijacked manhattan in in case you hadn't noticed so this war that's been building magneto just lit the fire on it um, and then we find out here from, uh, or he, this is where Beak tells of Magneto's plan to flip the magnetic poles, he says, but the humans have uh, not long to make their move. Tomorrow he's going to turn the magnetics, uh, the magnets of the earth upside down and kill them all. And Scott's like, he doesn't have that level of power. He can't do that. And then, then Beak drops it on. He's like, nope, there's more. He's been using kick to uh, make his powers greater. He's got 15 times the power that that he used to when we turn the page and we see him there taking a puff um, off of that kick and now he start this is where we really start to get some of the the mental um, breakdown of Magneto so he's got Esme there apparently he promised her that they could be together I guess romantically or maybe co-leading this new empire together and he shunned her he basically says uh, uh, Esme in the name of sanity do you honestly think that this is about you you're a child uh, are you insane how could you be anything to me but a means to an end. So he used Esme to uh, further his plans, and that's when she walks away. And then we see this disembodied voice down here at the end say, as predictable as ever. And he's like, wait a minute, 
where did that come from? And he looks over at the Zorn mask and he says, say, 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 say something again. And then something else says, uh, you made Zorn too well in the image of your idealism, your strength, and your wisdom. And then he lashes out at the Zorn helmet. We don't know where this, this voice is coming from. I have a couple ideas. Either he's really gone off the bender and like Zorn is another personality in his head or it's Charles or it's um, Esme or... Um, Martha Johnson, the, the floating head, and so he breaks the Zorn helmet. I love this this artwork layout right here. Uh, the the disembodied voice says, uh, "I am your inner inner star, Eric. I am the conscience you can never silence. I will never let you be." And that Zorn helmet's just sitting there, um, staring at him. And so Magneto goes to check on Xavier and says, "This is is this your doing, Charles?" And he checks the readings. Is like, "No, your your mind is still jammed." And Magneto says, uh, "Is this some side effect of the drug that little witch forgot to mention? Where do you find them, Charles? Or oh, these ghastly, rebellious children of yours? Why do they only ever?" listen to me when I was Zorn because Zorn was a good person you jackass <laughs> and then he uh, says uh, you know I almost miss our talks our struggles I was thinking about letting you walk free when this was over when there are no humans left to save um, he says uh, I'll show you a world where there is no strife where no one has to hide in the shadows quaking at the sounds of jets overhead you'll turn to me and finally say it was really nice without them Eric isn't it Eric you were right so he's just sitting there hoping he can finally win this philosophical debate with with Xavier and then we see Ernst come in with uh, Martha Johnson on, on a chain here. Now, um, I think I skipped over it um, back here a little bit. Let me flip back because I wanted to bring that up in, in this page. Um, I think someone was saying that, um, yeah, uh, one of the other sisters uh, right here on this page that I skipped um, is saying, I know Esme was using Martha Johansson's super brain to infu influence your minds. So we see evidence here that Martha Johnson is out there pushing um, people to do things maybe that they wouldn't normally do. So maybe that's what's happening um, with Magneto here. Maybe she's found a way around his helmet. Maybe she's the one um, that's got this voice coming out at, out at him, kind of making him think about Zorn and things like that. Ernst here says, uh, nothing, nobody likes what you're doing, Magneto. It's boring and old-fashioned. Martha says it's all coming to an end, and there's nothing anyone can do to stop it. And then that's when Jean Grey asks the Phoenix, excuse me, sorry, reaches about to Xavier, and uh, she he says, what, what is this place? Kind of seeing this um, kind of mental room here. Uh, she said, he says, are these from the future? What is happening? And she says, it's not a place. It's not a place. And then um, she, uh, he realizes that Jean is alive, and that's where we leave this issue off. So I actually really enjoyed this one uh, more so than the past couple issues. Um, I love Beak stepping up and kind of saying, hey, uh, I think we're the bad guys in this situation. Maybe we shouldn't be doing this. And you can just see just the absolute crumbling of down of the mental state of Magneto becoming what he has hated and feared his entire life, kind of coming full circle there. So guys, that is issue 149 of New X-Men. We've only got five issues left until we are done with this run. Thank you guys for hanging on with me and watching and reading through all these issues with me. It's been absolutely amazing. Uh, for this one, let me know your thoughts and opinions on it down in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If it's your first time here at the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. It would mean a lot. And until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.